hope you didn't ask for this, but you still got to deal with it. What's up everyone, this is Migs and welcome to The Far Side. This is my breakdown of the official She-Hulk trailer. Primarily this one showcases Jen Walters aka She-Hulk training with Bruce Banner's version of Professor Hulk in a secluded island. Obviously the big thing is the Daredevil cameo by the end but there are a bunch of other easter eggs too. We'll talk about those as well to start us off as the show premieres in a couple of days. We'll have to break it all down. Let's go. The trailer starts off with him waking her up with this air horn aptly named Mighty Hulk. Notice that she is in human form while sleeping. She then transforms to She-Hulk the instant she wakes up. She even breaks the bed in half. Bruce then goes on to ask, Still in control, no overwhelming feelings of rage. Then she replies a normal amount of rage. He then continues to document this. She's so pissed off and to be honest, who wouldn't be? The comic book reference of her reverting to human form while sleeping occurs in She-Hulk number 11 as a result of guilt when she rampaged and caused the destruction of Bone, Idaho. Then we see this seaside location. We have seen other parts of this island in other footage and it seems to be secluded. It may even be where we see Bruce's lab and contains scientific equipment, most of which are Stark Tech. Then we see the training montage continue with Bruce Banner doing a voiceover saying, this is a multi-year journey you're about to embark on. Basically saying you just signed a multi-year contract with Marvel. We'll definitely get a lot more of She-Hulk over the years. The character has been part of multiple teams throughout her run in Marvel Comics including replacing the thing as part of the Fantastic Four. This time we see them measuring strength levels. Bruce throws a rock with one hand. Notice his arm is completely healed from when we last saw him in Shang-Chi. The arm got all shriveled up due to him using the Infinity Stones during the events of Avengers Endgame, but then Jen throws the rock even further. In the comics, depiction of She-Hulk's considerable strength is a little lesser compared to her cousin, but what's unique about her is that she retains her intellect and personality throughout her transformation. The thing about the Hulk's strength is that the more he becomes angry, the stronger he gets, but inversely, he becomes more brutish. This is a version of Professor Hulk or Intelligent Hulk, which could be explained as a limiter to his strength. Then Bruce asks, who's your best friend? To which she answers, Nikki, talking about her BFF, Nikki Ramos, from work. Bruce then replies, Spandex. Spandex is your best friend. In reference to their transformations, often ripping their clothes up as they gain height and considerable muscle mass. Jen should be as depicted in the comics, a little over 5 feet tall, becomes a towering 7 feet in a matter of seconds. Funnily enough, in Savage She-Hulk, all we can see her wear are ripped clothes. He then says being a Hulk asks for balance. As he slowly does a hand balance race or something, my yoga game is weak. Well, just like him, look at She-Hulk do her twirling one hand balancing thing, ending with this thumbs up, again beating the Hulk, who I must say must have had at least 15 years worth of experience. In hindsight, the Hulk's depiction for the past couple of movies have been lacking and it seems his character is in a state of stagnation. But of hindsight. <laughs> That's a topic for another video. He says, you have so much to learn, we can hear Bruce say as he slams a large binder in front of Jennifer at breakfast. Then we see this shot from previous teasers, this scene of her transforming inside a test chamber with what appears to be a wall full of Stark Industries saw blades. We can see her slam the entire thing against the wall. Ah! Yeah. An initial iteration of her transformation is triggered by fear, but has since become at will, which might be an extension of her retaining self-awareness when she hulks out. The last teaser, we see her break open the door in anger. Quick shot of her punching the ground, we can see the sheer power as she makes a crater and rocks the ground beneath them. Then cut to this scene where she tells Bruce, Clearly nailing it at all these names. Referencing her natural affinity towards Hulk powers. Then we see a classic Hulk move here. She uses the thunderclap against Bruce. He gets thrown into a pile of boulders as she jauntily hops away. The next scene, Bruce tells her that if she wants to go back being a lawyer, that it would be cool. She-Hulk then turns to face the viewers and says, He doesn't mean that. Hulk heard her and turns to her. She then turns back and clearly rethinks what just happened. Seems this is the first time she does this in the series. Her breaking the fourth wall, however, is not really new to this character, nor is it a copy of another well-known superhero, Deadpool. Oh, hello. I know, right? 
quite the opposite as She-Hulk all throughout John Byrne's run of the sensational She-Hulk often breaks the hypothetical fourth wall, issue 1 even has her on the cover threatening readers if they don't buy her book. Then we see the Marvel logo turning a gamma green, then on to LA and the offices of Goodman, Lieber, Kurtzberg, and Holloway, or GLKH, renowned for their pioneering superhuman law division. This is the brainchild of senior partner Holden Holloway, who we'll see later on. His voice can be heard here saying more and more eccentric superheroes are coming out of the woodwork. And just as he said this, we can see Frogman flying off, although in the comics, Eugene's thing was sleeping really high, courtesy of his suit built by his father. But here it looks like he has a jetpack. Then a man jumps off a window crashing into a car, then walks up brushing off the debris from his clothes like it was nothing. Next scene, a judge changes to what looks like a light elf, gleefully making fun of court. Then we see the scene of him with Jen wanting her to be the face of the division, or well, rather She-Hulk. The next scene we see her come face to face with Emil Blonsky aka Abomination. <laughs> inside a security prison. She'll be representing him, then cut to them inside Hallway's office. She says this is a conflict of interest, saying that Blonsky tried to kill her cousin, referencing of course the events of the Incredible Hulk movie with Edward Norton as the Hulk. He then says it's quite alright, so we see this TV footage of her next. Headline says she Hulk to defend Abomination. She then says that they only care because she's representing Blonsky, implying that Abomination is popular for some reason. Namaste. Next shot, we see these what looks to be like groupies with some kind of floral headwear and they are all wearing white. Maybe he became some sort of celebrity. This time inside a courtroom, Titania busts in wearing, I don't know what that is. Titania is a classic enemy of She-Hulk, super strong due to Doctor Doom altering her physiology using advanced alien technology in Battle World as part of this Secret War storyline. In one issue, she even uses the Power Stone to defeat She-Hulk and almost succeeds in nearly killing her. Then she is told by her friend to do her thing and she transforms into the She-Hulk. This shot is so ridiculous, I mean that sidekick is a little cartoonish for me. Then we cut to a live feed of her. She definitely blows up in social media. Then we can see Wong enter through a sling ring portal, streaming from Comertage. Miss Walters, we answer to a higher power. Our universe is on the edge of a precipice. While this voiceover happens, a few scenes are shown. This ball and chain weapon emanating purple light. This might be alien tech based on these mysterious inscriptions. Then we see a case with a radiation warning on top containing three vials. The middle one having a huge needle. Then Emil transforms to the abomination. As he does so, his head hits the ceiling inside the prison container and the alarms go off. Right after, we see Jennifer and Wong looking up at him from across the room. Jennifer says she is a lawyer and they do things by the book. The book of the Shanty. As seen in Multiverse of Madness. No, the book of American uh, laws. Then a short scene of her inside a bar where patrons are chanting her name. Bruce on the voiceover says whether she likes it or not, she's now a superhero. We then cut to her being confronted by what looks to be like the Wrecking Crew. Well, I assume this is to be the Wrecking Crew for a couple of reasons. This guy wearing the helmet is supposedly Bulldozer. In the comics, his helmet is specially made armor that he uses to ram opponents. Assuming that's a crowbar, this should be the leader of the bunch named The Wrecker. Technically, the crowbar gave all four of them their superhuman strength when it was struck by lightning with all of them holding it. The Wrecker is the strongest among them and this enchanted crowbar is able to level buildings in minutes, much like Thor's Mjolnir. Thunderball is this dude with a ball and chain and last should be Pile Driver with the strong fists. She goes on saying let's do this and then proceeds to savagely beat them. The Wrecking Crew being villains of Thor is a formidable bunch, although inherently goofy in terms of their premise. They could be portrayed as a threat to even She-Hulk, if done correctly. Their mystical origin is actually more interesting than just a bunch of random guys with some tech. I hope they do more with these characters in the long run. Then we see her arrive in a limo wearing a custom gown, enjoying the limelight. Cut to the Hulk and She-Hulk on a superhero landing, probably testing how high she can leap. They share this ability of leaping really high using their Hulk that legs. When they land, hers not quite landing right, looking a little bit awkward towards the end there. Another shot of Titania, this time in pink. Then we see her with her date we've seen in the previous trailer, where she goes on her Tinder dating website app or something, and she goes home with this lucky guy. This is one of her things in the comics and she's very open about her sexuality. 
This scene with troopers pointing guns with what looks like advanced technology might be some other threat, possibly in the gala she attends. This scene where she looks serious in the background, flooded with the emergency lighting, maybe she's facing some unknown foe, we don't know. Then this beast creature charges her from across the room, maybe from the same scene, although it's not that clear. Do you know that friend you had in high school? Who was way cooler than you were, attractive, got all the attention from everyone. showing her in some kind of meeting. Then we see these guys, definitely superhumans or aliens. Probably she attends Blonsky's self-help group. As we can see a slogan at the back saying, today is today. The quote is attributed to Emil Blonsky, as you can see at the bottom right there. Then Bruce, this time saying, I think I'm jealous, referring to the way Jen has been so attuned with her transformation. In contrast, his first time becoming the Hulk is really out of control, runs around rampaging and destroying a lot of stuff. So definitely jealousy, Bruce. He then pushes her off a cliff the way he does it like in the original Avengers when he punches Thor, she flips him off of course as she falls down. After the She-Hulk logo, we see a figure flip through the air. This is Daredevil wearing his original yellow and black suit in the comics. Camera focusing on his billy clubs but we can see parts of the costume too. For those of you who don't know, Daredevil aka Matt Murdock is played by Charlie Cox, is also a lawyer but works out of Hell's Kitchen, New York. They might have crossed paths for a reason and we even might see them inside a courtroom within the series that's it for my breakdown guys thank you for watching please consider like and follow if you like this content i'll be covering the entire series as well take care out there and see you on the next one